coming up on today's episode. The Starship S8 is closer than ever to its 15 km flight. We're gonna take a look at what's left to be done before S8 can actually launch. And we also discuss the chance of S8 survival after the flight. We have a lot of exciting SpaceX stuff to cover, so let's just jump straight in. I'm Radim and welcome back to the Space Base News. The Starship SN8 is closer than ever to its 15 km flight. As always, we can't kick off this video anywhere else than at the SpaceX spaceport, the future gate to Moon, Mars and beyond, the launch site at Boca Chica. A lot has happened since my last episode where we left the Starship serial number 8 freshly stacked pointing towards the sky waiting for the next round of testing. Since the mating, the crane called Tengzilla was attached to the nose cones for several days, but later on Monday shortly after 3 pm Boca Chica time, SN8 was carefully unhooked and finally set free. Not longer after that, the Tengzilla also cleared the scene and there she was, the Starship SN8 in all of its glory. It almost seemed like this is just about to release the raw power of those three mighty Raptor engines underneath, but sadly not yet, it won't happen as fast as we thought. Last episode I mentioned that after the successful static fire we expect the second one to take a place right after the mating and then maybe just maybe followed by the launch. Well it's obvious now that didn't happen before the end of October as some optimists like me hoped. But there is no need to cry as we are closer than ever now, in fact we might be less than a week from the actual liftoff. That's right. Serial number 8 could potentially launch this week according to road closures that are currently in place. At the moment, SpaceX team has one primary testing opportunity on Monday, November 9th with backup dates on November 10th and 11th. And also there is another primary date for Thursday, November 12th with backup date for Friday, November 13th. As we can see here in the notice itself, the reason why SpaceX requested those closures is Starship SN8 static fire and 15 km flight. So I wonder if SpaceX plans to go through static fire on Monday with eventual backup dates on Tuesday and Wednesday and then maybe the flight itself on Thursday, November 12th? Well, I think there is a chance for sure. However, there are still several tests that are left to be done, so let's go over everything we know so far. First things first, let's talk about the upcoming static fire. On the November 3rd, us space nerds and dreamers had the option to forget about the craziness surrounding US elections and tune in for NASA Space Fire or La Padre's livestream instead. And there we could enjoy the nicely frosted Starship's tank and a lot of venting, which all indicated likely successful cryoproofing test of the liquid oxygen header tank. So next up, there is another static fire on the checklist, but there is a little bit of confusion about the configuration of the test. Let me explain. The first static fire we've all seen on October 20th, the serial number 8 was feeding its hungry raptors from the main oxygen and methane tanks located in the body of the vehicle. And it all went seemingly well, so we expect that the next time SpaceX will ignite those Starship engine chambers, it will be all about testing the header tanks and all the plumbing around as it really needs to work perfectly for the landing burn. Liquid oxygen header tank is located in the tip of the nose cone as we said and methane header tank is integrated integrated with the common dome. When the Starship lifts off the ground, the propellant there remains untouched as the ship holds it solely as a reserve fuel to be used later just only for that landing burn. Otherwise, when the time comes for the SN8 to final launch, maybe it would successfully soar to its 15 km apogee, hanging there for a couple of seconds, but then instead of seeing the Starship proudly standing on the pad after its victorious landing, we witness its spectacular demise in really big boom. And surely nobody wants to see this incredible pinnacle of human engineering to crash and explode, right? <laughs> Never mind. But the thing is, a part of this next milestone, fireproofing the header tanks, SpaceX will most likely go back and repeat the exact same fire test that's already been done weeks ago. And why is that? 
You may remember in the last episode we briefly mentioned the engine shuffle that happened underneath the starship when Raptor serial number 39 was removed and replaced by Raptor serial number 36. And because of this modification it's very likely SpaceX team won't want to take any chances so just to be sure they'll probably ignite this refreshed trio of Velociraptors once more with the old configuration feeding them from the main tank again. So to sum this up, it's highly likely Starship will perform at least two slightly different static fires, but then we also have to take into account that SpaceX will probably do some more final checks. Maybe they are gonna retest the RCS thrusters once more, make sure all of its flaps works and only after all that it's done then the Starship SN8 will finally be truly fly ready. What's your take on this? Do you think there is enough time for SpaceX to get everything ready during currently scheduled testing windows? Or is November 13 too harsh deadline and we'll probably have to wait a little longer to see Starship S8 in the air? As always, I'm happy to discuss that with you in the comments down below. If you liked today's episode so far, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. This kind of support won't cost you anything, but for me it makes all the difference. Thank you so much. Now if you are really impatient biting your nails waiting for SNH's launch, let me give you some excellent remedy that can help you out. Indie game developer Ole Arco made a cool simple Starship landing game where you can actually try yourself to launch, fly and land with SN8. The game offers two difficulties, normal and hard. But no matter which one you choose, I can assure you, you'll see your starship performing RUDs, meaning blowing up into small pieces, more often than not. As Ole said himself, the Starship SN8 simulator is not a very serious physics based game. Hardcore real world simulation is not really the point here, but with that being said, the game is not that easy. The vehicle is fully controllable, you can throttle, roll, pitch, yo, and you can also deploy the landing legs. There are several landing pads you can choose from, so if you want go and check this game out, the link is in the description. Also the game is in Unity Engine, so I can confirm myself it runs not just on Windows but also on Mac OS and I've seen Linux version as well. Now let's get back to the real world starship. What are the odds of SN8 surviving its 15 km hop or how far do you think it can get during its test flight? Everyday Astronaut kicked off discussion about it on Twitter, you can check that out yourself and some interesting viewpoints appear there and also Elon Musk himself joined the conversation to share some info. Although we'd like to see 100% success where serial number 8 nailed it with safe touchdown and everything around, but in reality even if the landing attempt will end up causing huge crater and bunch of smoke over Boca Chica site, there is still plenty of other very important stuff SpaceX team aiming to test and try during the flight and all this potential data will be extremely valuable. As Elon mentioned, stable control descent with body flaps will be great and if they also manage to succeed switching the propellant feed from main to header tanks and also relight the engines, that will be a major win for SpaceX. Tim Dad also asked Elon if there's been any subscale tests to make sure the belly flop and descent will work and Elon replied they indeed tested a small model in a wind tunnel so it will probably work at scale but as he pointed out, reality can always uh, surprise you. In any case, it looks like SpaceX is taking a little bit more cautious approach after all. Even if there is pretty hefty chance SN8 will eventually end up in flames, they still wanna do absolutely everything they can to not blow up both the vehicle and also this unique chance to show the world that Starship is not some wacky concept of some madman, but the real deal, the future of the spaceflight. We've seen Falcon 9's boosters landing so many times already that SpaceX is slowly but surely achieving one of its secondary goals, making rocket launches boring and routine, at least for general public. But let's remind ourselves, this crazy landing sequence with Starship slamming from left to right just before the touchdown, that's just something so unbelievable crazy, especially on this scale, that if successful it will be such a great way to show all the fans and naysayers alike that the revolution in spaceflight is already happening right now before our eyes. And it can already happen in a week or so, but even if this date slips again, we are still so close. SpaceX just needs a little bit more time with SN8 because of the absolute uniqueness of the upcoming test flight. And if they'll need some more, 
that's just totally fine with me. In SpaceX case and Starship development in particular, we're talking about weeks in terms of potential delay, and that's really nothing in the spaceflight industry. Now let's bring this back around to the ultimate goal for SpaceX and Starship, sending humans to Mars and establishing self-sustaining colony. This stunning photo, recently taken by South Padre, might not look extraordinary at first glance, but what makes this shot unique and really exciting is that if we move up a little bit, we can see the Moon and Mars both above SN8's nose cone, so Starship is symbolically targeting its future destinations already, and who knows what other planets or moons are also gonna be in its future crosshair. What a great picture, a small glimpse of what's to come, and now with the Starship, the space-based future of our civilization is coming sooner rather than later. Okay, that's all I have for today's episode. If you like the content I do, please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button and also hit the notification bell so you'll get notified each time I drop new episode. Let me just say one huge thank you to all of you guys who subscribed after the last episode. It's still unbelievable for me. I was 117 subscribers before I dropped the last episode. Now I'm like over 1300. It's unbelievable and incredible. Thank you so much. And I'll I'll see you next time. Bye.